Well, good morning, and welcome to today's daily service. I'm really glad that you've tuned in and hope that you're doing well. This week in our daily services, we've been focused on the Lord Jesus Christ through the lens of the life of the Apostle Peter, through a series of selections in Mark's Gospel. And today, we come to one of the most pivotal moments in Peter's life, one of his most crucial encounters with the Lord Jesus. But before we look at that, I think it'll be helpful to cast our minds back a bit to a prophecy from the prophet Isaiah, which was given over 600 years before the time of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's say aloud together just some of uh, the prophet Isaiah's words in chapter 53. I'll say the parts that say leader, and would you join in on those that say all? Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Let's pray. Sovereign Lord, we thank you for the gift of the suffering servant, one who would come and be afflicted by you not because of anything he had done, but in our place, bearing our iniquities upon him, bearing our wounds and our sorrows. We thank you for the Lamb of God, and we pray as we look at this account in Mark's Gospel that you would help us to see him anew, cherish him, and be willing to give all to follow him wherever he might lead us whatever he might ask of us, his followers. We pray all these things in his name, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, our Bible reading today comes in Mark chapter 8, verses 31 through 33, immediately following on from the passage that we looked at with Vaughn just yesterday. So have a, have a hear of this encounter between Peter and Jesus. He then, he being Jesus, to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan! He said, you do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. A crucial moment in Peter's life. Don't you love the Bible? <laughs> All of the heroes of the Bible, with the exception of the Lord Jesus Christ, have feet of clay. Peter's just had one of his most shining moments with Jesus. Who do you say that I am? We saw yesterday. Jesus has just asked, and Peter has rightly responded by saying, you are the Christ. Or as it's recorded in uh, Matthew's gospel, you are the Christ, the Son of God. Shining moment, gold star. But no sooner has he achieved that insight with God's help into who Jesus is, that he then has one of its, his lowest moments, feet of clay. Jesus begins to teach that the Son of Man will have to suffer many things. That statement, that title, Son of Man, 
comes from the book of Daniel, chapter 7. And there the Son of Man is pictured as one who would come at the end of days and receive great glory and honor from God and great sovereign power over all things. And the hearers of Jesus at this time would have understood the Messiah to be one like that, who would receive great honor and power. And very understandably, as we saw yesterday, Peter thought that the Messiah would be one who would come and overthrow the Roman rulers and immediately establish his kingdom, overcoming every opposition. And so when Jesus starts talking about the need to suffer, well, we shouldn't blame Peter for missing the boat. Jesus teaches that he's going to be rejected by all the high and holy of the land. We're told that the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law would reject him. And Jesus knew that he must be killed, but yet after three days would rise again. But it didn't make sense to Peter. So he pulls Peter aside, he pulls Jesus aside, and begins to actually rebuke him, likely out of concern for him. Jesus, if you're the Messiah, surely you're not going to suffer. But Jesus saw that the Son of Man was also that suffering servant from Isaiah chapter 53. That he as the Son of Man would have to descend to the deepest depths and indeed be killed. And so Jesus rebukes Peter. Get behind me, Satan. He saw in Peter's temptation not to suffer, the temptation, the hiss of the serpent himself, who uh, met Jesus at the commencement of his ministry and tried to tempt him then from the path of the cross, the path of suffering, as if he could somehow have the glory without the sacrifice that he was called to give. Jesus had to suffer. First, because the world would not understand him and would reject him and not accept his claim. On one level, that's why he had to suffer. But on another level, he would have to suffer for you and for me, bearing our sin on the cross as a sacrifice for sin. So that if you trust him, if I trust him, we're renewed in relationship with God and that broken relationship is mended through faith in him because Jesus has taken care of the sin problem that becomes comes between us and God. And once we trust in Jesus, we then begin to follow him and his way. And if we're going to do that, it will mean suffering for us. It will mean rejecting the purposes that the world has for us and pursuing the interests of Jesus in this world. Peter had in mind the things of men, the things of humankind, whereas Jesus had in mind the purposes of God. And that's a challenge to each of us, where we're meant to be calling people to God and to being reconciled with him. Are we telling our friends and family about the Lord Jesus? This passage challenges us too, no matter the cost to us. So as we begin our time of prayer, let's begin with the words that Jesus spoke immediately after this encounter with Peter that we've looked at today. Let's pray. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. Let's call to mind the ways that we've failed to live for the Lord Jesus Christ, knowing that he forgives us when we confess our sins to him. Through the words of this confession, let's pray aloud. Lord God, have mercy on us according to your steadfast love, and in your abundant mercy, blot out our transgressions, cleanse us from our sin, create in us a clean heart and life 
and continually renew a right spirit in us. Amen. And lastly, we pray for children and families. Father, as we look towards whatever kind of school holiday this summer will bring, we pray for families and for children. Pray that you would keep our children safe and flourishing at this time. That you'd especially be with parents, perhaps single parents, who are especially under strain. We thank you for them and all that they do for our children and pray that you would give our kids a good end to their school year. We thank you for our teachers and our schools and commit them to you in the closing weeks of this school year. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Well, let's sing together. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. May you go with this blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and evermore. Amen.